YouTube, it's Brad Phillips. We're opening a box. Ooh, it's one we've done before, but we're gonna do it again just because we loved it so much. This is the Pitts 1.4 meter, and this time it's got the reflex, so we're gonna do it that way. Before we did it on just AS3X and safe, and I believe we even set up flapper on. So if you wanna see that, we've got videos already published right now, and you can check it out. But if you wanna see the latest and greatest, what you're gonna get if you ordered it right now, you're generally gonna be ordering it with the Reflex V2. So we're gonna show you how this works and amazing plane. We already know it's amazing. So can't wait to get this thing opened. Oh yeah, there it is. Which by the way, the picture on this box does not do this plane justice no. because it's faded and kind of an ugly picture if you ask me. But no this way. plane is amazing. Once yeah. you get it out, it is bright red and it is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. The only thing that would make this plane better is if it was yellow, because I really like biplanes mm. in yellow. So, Without further ado, which is ironic because we've had a lot of planes that are yellow lately. We have actually. So I don't know if they're just listening to me or if it's just pure luck. Can you I grab that corner and go up with it? I love yellow planes. Red is cool too though. Yeah, red's good too. Red usually does good in skies and you don't have a lot of, you know, disappearing acts that happen because of it. The sun is right here. So you may see it's like on fire right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's new about this? Um, Let's see, which side do we have all the specs? We have the specs somewhere on here. Where the heck are the specs? Maybe we don't get the, the specs. No. On the Chinese? Oh. You wanna look at this? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't <laughs> see it anywhere. Okay, so we're just gonna break right into it. Now, normally on a plane like this, you've got four channels. You have throttle, elevator, rudder, and ailerons. Okay, and you really don't need any more than that. So this has a Reflex V2 in it. We're gonna see how it works. In the last plane we did, for FMS, we actually tried doing some tricks and we didn't have an opportunity to do them. So we're gonna try it on this plane. Uh, and we'll talk about that more as we get into it. But there it is, look at that beauty. Amazing, this is a great plane, guys. You will love it. If you love biplanes, you're gonna love this plane. And it is super capable and super fun and super, super powerful. So if you get an opportunity to get one, don't pass it up, check it out in the links of the video description below and you can see where to buy one to help support Brian Phillips RC. I wanna put this here because I got stuff back there today. So what we have to do to start this process is obviously untape it. We're gonna do the unbox build and then radio setup like we normally do on airplanes. But we're gonna set up the radio setup a little bit different. We're gonna to try to take advantage of the serial bus connector and using a serial receiver if we possibly can. If we can't, then we'll just divert to another alternative plan too. And mostly because we're out of AR620s, which is, which is probably what we would use on this plane, but honestly, you can use an AR410, uh, mm -hmm. and that's gonna give you what you need to fly this plane. Now, if you wanna set it up with flaperons or do anything fancy with the, uh, with the wings, keep in mind, you've only got aileron servos on the bottom wing, and they're connected mechanically from the top to the bottom. So it's not like you're gonna have four independent, you know, control surfaces, you're just gonna have two. And yes, you can do flap rounds on this plane, and yes, they are effective, but they are totally not necessary. This thing floats in if you want it to. Okay, so beautiful wings. Love the red. Looks super gorgeous. This is a really easy to build plane, so it will be a quick, and we've got that detail. I love those bumps, it looks super cool, like it's a wrapped plane. Got the nose cone here. Good match on the plastic. It's a big nose cone. Mm. Good match. We like it when the colors match like that. Okay, and then over here, you have to kind of slide them out. It's a little bit weird taking them out. Okay, so you can see this is, got the adapter to take the top wings. So these are the bottom wings. And then of course the servo wires are just tucked in here where the wing spar is gonna go together. Now on this, since we're doing the reflex, we're not gonna set up flap or anything, but we've never investigated, I don't know, maybe, maybe someday we'll have to actually dig into the uh, USB cable and see what it does, how hard it is to set up a reflex to actually do flap if it's possible. But for now, we're just gonna go the ordinary way. We've got two wing joiners, because you have a top and a bottom wing, okay? Carbon fiber, should be no problem there. And then this thing is gonna pop up and rotate up and out comes the wing. Okay. So this is the top, you can tell it's the top because on the bottom there's a wing connector 
and then this wing joiner. And these are longer, okay? They're longer because the fuse makes up the center of the bottom wing, mm. okay? And there's no detail on the bottom of those top wings. That's true, wings. yep. The bottom of the top wings has no specific detail, okay? So it's just a beautiful top with that uh, sunburst kind of effect. And absolutely gorgeous. This plane goes together, like I said, really easy. So I don't expect any problems putting this thing together. And so obviously on unboxes, sometimes we sort of scratch our heads, but you guys ask for them, so we do them. And that's one thing we do here on Brian Phillips RC that the other guys aren't doing and haven't done in the past. And that is basically doing detailed unbox build radio setup because a lot of you need help because you're just coming back to the hobby. If you're coming back to the hobby, you're in the right place. Brian Phillips RC is here for you and me and the camera crew will help get you up to speed so that you can do this yourself. And honestly, if you watch through a few of our videos, you're gonna pick it up really quick. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna work together to learn all the new tricks and make sure that we're viable as technology grows and changes. So that's what we do here. And if you're not new to the hobby, if you've been doing it for years and you've got all the tricks figured out, then just enjoy watching me make mistakes here on camera. That's what I do best. Okay, so we're gonna lay this off to the side. I always like to kind of put these puzzles back together as we go, because especially on these four piece boxes or five piece boxes like this, it's very hard to figure out how they go back together. Okay, so beautiful, beautiful horizontal stabilizer, nice big reinforcement. You may not be able to see it, but I'll try to hold this up. Light translucency through there because you don't wanna have that paint so thick. Definitely crisp it up, guys. Do not forget to do that because your elevator servo will not be happy if you don't. Okay, oh, they folded the manual. How <laughs> dare they? I'm gonna forgive them because I love this plane. It is an awesome plane and I can't wait to get it in the sky. So we'll put that out of the way. And we have some control adapters that are gonna go from the bottom to the top wings. Okay, so we'll just kind of lay these here, one for each side. And then we've got the actual connectors that go from top to bottom. Now, I'm assuming most of you are not gonna take this plane apart. Good, strong reinforcements, nice and stout on this axis. There's a little bit of twist to them, but once you get these connected, they don't twist, okay? So they're forced to be in the correct position. Now, do pay special attention. These things do matter left and right, okay? Also double check anytime they stuff stuff like this in. I do it because I will keep this as one big box, but they do it to hide these things in there so that we can do that with it. Right. We've never actually used one of those, but someday we will. Okay, so you can wait for that. That'll be a super exciting event. Okay, so these are for the horizontal stabilizer. This is the wing joiners for the wings and then nut and bolt sack. Camera crew, if you'd grab my nuts mm -hmm. sack sure. there and bolt sack. That'd Very be nice. great. Thank you. Okay, so we have a prop here. And uh, this prop is, let's talk about size real quick. This is a 15.9. <laughs> Those things are knife sharp. So be careful, people get hurt in two ways in this hobby if you haven't been in the hobby for a while. They get hurt by cutting themselves on props and they get hurt by having the lipos catch fire because they do stupid things like over discharge or overcharge them. So avoid doing that and you will minimize like the vast majority of the problems that people have with lipos are during charging and discharging, over discharging, okay? Rock hard, like literal carbon fiber tires, that's not good. We are saying that not to be smart asses, but we are. <clears throat> they need to start using softer tires. But these pants do come apart, they are accessible, but I must say those pants do look nice. They look really nice and you've got good clearance. Now, if you go to a pneumatic tire, I'm warning you about the pants. You may need to open these up a little bit so that the wheel pants don't rub because if you have vibrating wheel pants, it is annoying. And these will probably still vibrate a little bit, okay? So we'll put that aside for now. And we have the tail, vertical tail. Break it, okay? Very good. If you guys are super nervous about these things breaking, don't be it doesn't oftentimes happen. If you have a really rough landing, that'd be the only time I'd watch for this and pay special attention that your hinge doesn't break because that is a pinch hinge with reinforcement from paint and then a very light amount of glue that they usually run down the seam, but that's under the paint so you can't tell. Um, in, in our experience, we've had very good luck 
with uh, you know the planes that FMS makes, look at the body size, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Keeps everything nice and true. So you're not just depending on the substrate underneath. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so here we go guys. So we've got the aircraft here in the canopy. Looks like a twin seater, really cool. And you've got the uh, sort of, yeah, Chinaman, or I don't know, I can't tell, mm -hmm. but he's got pink lips. So he's kind of like, you know, transitioning to uh, extra special. So anyway, pretty cool. And then if you look here, you can see the instrument cluster, really neat. I don't know how sophisticated the instrument cluster in a pits really is. I'm guessing not very much because it's kind of a non-sophisticated plane. It's just a sophisticated pilot. So pretty cool. I'm gonna lay this right there and it does actually lay down. I didn't know that. That's pretty sweet. Nice. Um, also, let's pop the canopy and show them how this works. I wanna warn you about the canopy. This thing is hard to pop off. So you're gonna to wanna to put tape on it just like we do on a lot of planes. Uh, it does uglify it a little bit, but just be careful. Oh no, our reflex popped off. That's not good. Uh -oh. Crap, I don't know where that went. I'm assuming it went down there. Ooh, good, I can see the double-sided tape. Ooh, that's close. Close one. We're gonna have to put some chain glue down there. There's double-sided tape. Oh, okay, we're good now. Um, okay, so just talking about this for two seconds, we have four wires, excuse me, five. There's elevator, rudder, S bus, PPM mode, throttle, and ailerons, okay? So those are the four connections that would come from the receiver ordinarily. We have what is a power cord that goes out. This is an EC5, which will be compatible with our IC5. And I just noticed something weird. There is a warning about chopping your fingers and hands off right here. Mm. I don't know why I might just accidentally chop that off. Oops, dang it, it fell off again. Always does that. Pesky wires and their warnings. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue through this build. Beautiful build, very easy. In fact, okay, so we have this is gonna go to one aileron and this is gonna go to the other aileron, okay? Everything else is already hooked up, so it should be pretty straightforward stuff. Okay, so the next step is going to be, I'm gonna just set this canopy aside and cockpit area so we can come back to that later. So I'm not sure the best way to start with this camera crew. Do you remember? Nothing on the bottom, on the bottom. so we'll go ahead and put this out of the way. We might take a quick second and clean yeah. up and come right back. Okay, so we cleaned up a little bit, and I just don't want to forget to show you guys this. I usually roll off, you know, a couple inches of tape. This is a little bit longer than usual, and I always cut the end. I hate these stupid little ridged ends on this clear tape, and so I always cut that off, and then I'm left with a clean break if I ever have to peel that stuff off. But just keep in mind, once you tape onto this thing, you're not going to get it off without taking that red paint off, okay? No matter how nice the model is, it's always going to want to take it. And then you see that little hole there? We got to clean that up after we're done. Okay, so we're gonna fold this onto itself and leave a tail up. It's very basic stuff. I'm sure you guys can figure this out without seeing me do it, but I'm just gonna do it for posterity reasons in case you guys really do need some help. Okay, now I'm gonna go right up to the seam so it's nice and clean. And I wanna try to get it as nice and even as possible. So then that makes it buzz less, okay? It, they generally don't buzz too bad. But then what I need to do is you see this? See how there's tape over the hole? Just pierce it, okay? And then all you gotta do is put your canopy on and slide this down and push it through a couple of times. Okay, so there you go. And then if you still have a little bit of residue in there and it's driving you crazy or it makes that thing work badly, then what you can do is you can take your X-Acto knife and you can take and clean this out by just going around, okay? I've not had to do that in the past, but I'm just showing you how easy it is if you decide to do it. It's not really that big a deal, okay? And then once you've got that cleaned out, you should be able to just drop it on and snap it in there, okay? So we'll be back in just a second with more. Okay, so my camera crew handled all the nuts and uh, so now we just gotta put these things where they belong. Now keep in mind, there's little holders and they show the M3 nuts go in here. I'm gonna show you what that means, okay? These nuts with the nylock facing 
inside, according to the drawing, go like this. They are a little bit awkward to put in. So if you continue to drop your nuts all over the place, what you can do is you can take a screwdriver of a smaller size like this and you can hold them and you can put them on the tip like this and that'll help you to get them lined up. And then this becomes like a de facto nut cert, okay? Mm. And it was such an easy process. I mean, it's so weird when you read the manual, it seems like it's gonna be hard, but it just takes like three seconds. Um, it's really not hard. Okay, so I'm putting the nylock in toward the other one. Come on now, come on now. See, and the paint on this one's just a little bit thicker, and so it's fighting me just a hair. But then once it's in, it's golden, okay? And so we just have to do that four times, and then in true FMS fashion, we have one extra. One left over. Okay? Yep. And we have, like, always had one extra, except for one exception, and that was recently when we did the 15th anniversary Viper. Mm -hmm. we, had we, one, we had the exact yeah. amount. Yeah. So I don't know if they were running short on nuts and bolts. Okay, so I just did the other two, of course, off Super camera, easy. no problem. And it went totally smooth. Now we need to put the landing gear on, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the landing gear go on pretty straightforward stuff. Just don't let them get all wonked out on you, like I did. Okay, then you're gonna be putting a screw in to receive that nut cert that's actually not a nut cert. The heck was that noise? I don't <laughs> know. like a cat attacking something? Uh, okay, so let's do this. There we go. Okay, so those fairings, by the way, look really nice. They always have. So we're gonna use these longer the screws. Long screws. The longest There's ones. longer and shorter and Phillips, okay? Yep. So these are number twos, right? Or yes. not number twos, two but two millimeter. millimeters. Yeah. Okay. So the two millimeter drive in hand, okay? We're just gonna slide it in from the end here and just work until we get good alignment. I'm gonna put these down here, camera okay. crew. Okay, I see them. Huh, there we go, there it goes. So it's just kind of walking through the plastic right now and then once it hits the nut, then you might have to reinvigorate it so you get purchased, which I just did. So I don't know if you could see what I was doing, but I was wiggling up, down, left, and right. And then that's, that's that, okay? Now you don't want to go so tight that you crack your plastic. You do want this to be able to move free. So you'll want to check those periodically because if you have like a bunch of rough landings and a lot of vibration, or if you do like, you know, three mile long touch and goes, you get a lot of vibration pass through these. So you want to double check that you don't have anything come free on you. But they are nylocks, so they shouldn't back off without a lot of vibration, truthfully. Okay. And that's one thing that we've really been always really impressed with on FMS. Uh, they make a good quality plane. It's always uh, in the upper echelon of, you know, ready to fly-ish stuff that would be, you know, like E-Flight-esque because they make E-Flight planes. <laughs> you may have noticed. Okay, so here we go. And honestly, we haven't had, shoot, we haven't had but a handful of servos between E-Flight and FMS that have ever failed us. Yeah. So for those of you that like to redo all the servos and everything, that's fine. More power to you. You can do whatever you want. This is, after all, just a hobby, and we, we love it. It's a beloved hobby and lifestyle for a lot of us, but it is still just a hobby. So if you decide you want to do that for extra fun, get more out of it, that's cool. Uh, but I don't think you need to. Okay, so this goes forward, meaning that the point goes up toward the nose here. Okay. Then this drops, and there's four regular Phillips screws. Camera crew and I were talking off camera about, man, that's a lot of screws. And... Uh, nuts and bolts in the nut sacks. We just and, used eight of them pretty quick. So yeah, exactly. And that's, I was, I was telling her, I was like, I remembered this one went really quick, but it's always hard for us to remember because it's been, you know, a couple of years since we built this model and we do love building the models the first time if they're easy and the second right. time if they're easy still, but we do hate putting together dynams. <laughs> <laughs> which is why you, which is why, why you don't see we dynams. never do them anymore <laughs> so now until dynam straightens up which will never happen in a million billion years and then we'll we'll do them again but truth be told there's a place for dynams. there's a time and place for people it's that have not a ours. certain budget for that sort of thing so we don't want to beat anybody up that or loves time. dynam people that truthfully if you have time. unlimited time then it's fine you know but you know what else is fine stick built be yeah. way better Okay, so these are going to be torqued down nicely. You get a nice purchase now. You see it kind of pulls it in. Yep. Okay. 
Now, I'm a little bit tempted to just do the prop while we've got it all like pointed this way. We could because it tells us to do the wings next, which is just going to yeah, all it's just going to make it terrible. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to do the wings next. OK, so we've got the prop. This is going to sit like that. You're going to undo this. This is going to come off of that. And you guys are like, wow, I can't believe he's going to put the prop on there. He's living dangerously. Well, I know yep. some of you guys are going to be off put by that, and you may not think it's a good example to the young children watching. Let me just forgive all of you that are really concerned. There's no young people watching this show. It's only middle-aged dudes like me, 100% yep. of you. We can prove it. There's like seven kids and 14,000 guys my age. Yeah. Okay, it's mostly guys. Then there's like, there's like 25% of the guys watching this are watching on their wife's account. Right. <laughs> or girlfriend's account. Because <laughs> we have analytics. We do check these things. So that's why we don't mind having a, a joke about, you know, adult things once in a while. Like beer. 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 Or eating lunch. Gross. Yeah. Lunch is okay. Lunch. Lunch is okay. Lunch is okay. All right. So camera crew, if you could hold my prop for me for a second. I'm just going to torque this. You see how it's spinning everything? What a pain in the neck. You see how it's spinning everything? Mm -hmm. That's annoying. Stop spinning. There it goes. I got it now. Okay, so we're torqued down. Now, if you ever have one that just refuses to obey and it wants to keep spinning like that, sometimes you gotta reach in here and hit the motor. And it is hard to do on this plane because the cowl is so big. It's a long reach. Um, yeah, I know, it's awkward, okay? So now this is gonna go on here. What a beautiful fit and look at the perfect Colors match. gorgeous. Yep, plastic to plastic. Assuming you need that other long screw. Uh, nope, nope. you need a short screw, almost certainly, because the long screws they would give us an extra, wouldn't they? Oh, I thought you were gonna have two extras after the gear. Okay, I miscounted. Okay, so this is a short one. See? Which I think is a 10 millimeter if you're following along at home in your instruction manual. Yeah, that your but wife is I mean, to you. Most, most of you are not gonna wanna read the instruction manual. Let's just get right down to it. That's why I'm here. That is awesome. That's really nice. Okay, sweet. So this plane, like I said, goes together quick and it's, I love putting it together because it's easy. <laughs> and some of you are like, yeah, but that's half the fun. You gotta love it. And it's like, no, you don't have to love it. We built a lot of planes, guys, a lot of planes. And we, we do enjoy doing it, uh, but for us, you know, like the second, third, fourth, fifth times, it's like, okay, we yeah. get the point. So for you who haven't built it before, you may actually love it even more than we do. Are we doing the tail next? I don't know. I think I'm going to stick this thing in that thing. It does tell you to keep hey, it inverted. Watch, watch this. I'm going to stick that thing in that thing. Okay. Then I'm going to stick this thing into that thing because I just want to show the people how amazing this is. 1.4 meters is a pretty good size bird, okay? Now remember, this is a twin. It's a biplane. So you're going to have like a huge amount of area. Gigantic. Taken so yeah, keep that in mind when you're considering this plane. Because, uh, you know, if it doesn't fit in your car, truck, or otherwise, you're going to have to disassemble it. And it's not super. I want to show the people. See this? It's got a taper on it. Hold still. Taper yes. goes forward. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're going to stick this right here. All right. And then this one here tapers also. So it tapers back the other way. Now, if you get it wrong, it won't work. Okay. Make sense? Now there's nuts that go in there, right? Oh wait, what the heck happens there? Nope, just the eight millimeter screws. What? No. Why don't know, you skipped around. I know, we'll come back to that. I just wanted to get the wing together, so I was super excited about okay. it. Okay, so we need to put on the tail sections next, right? Mm -hmm. And then we gotta do two screws. Okay, so we're gonna get the horizontal stabilizer and we need shorties for this? Yep, Okay. the tens. So they said leave it upside down. How the heck would you do that? Well, not now. That was just for the wing, but you skipped that part. Oh, yeah, because I wanted to do the like more reasonable method sure. of putting the tail together. Generally speaking, once you get the wings on a plane, it's it's unwieldy, folks. Especially this one. And it, you know, like we build so many planes in the wrong order. It doesn't really matter unless it's like a hangar nine, and then it matters. I'm trying to think of if has it ever actually mattered? Yeah, sometimes it does. We've run into a couple of problems. Yeah, maybe so. We make it hard on ourselves. We do. Things. Just because, you know, instructions. It's for girls. <clears throat> that's, why you read, that's why you read them to me. <laughs> okay, so there's that. All right, so we got to turn the wheel. You see the wiggly wheel? Here's the wiggly wheel. You need to turn that, okay? 
So now that thing's gonna go into this thing. That is gonna go into this. Okay. And then there's a screw that goes through from here to there, okay? okay? That locks this in place. This drops into there. See, watch. Yep. See this? Whoa, amazing. Okay. And then this is gonna, uh, how does that go in? I can't remember exactly how that goes in. <clears throat> it's a little awkward. It's a lot of, a lot of things sticking in a lot of different places. Hey, I'm sorry, I gotta I got be there, I can't do it. Okay, so there's that. Mm, get in there. Come on now, get in there. <sighs> so I can't help but feel like that's, I missed the hole. Did I miss the hole? No, I, I didn't miss the hole. I don't think it's all the way in the hole yet. Nah, eh, it's getting pretty dang close. The tail, you mean? Yeah. I can't help but feel like it's missing the hole. Yeah. No, it's doing the right thing. But this has to drop down quite a little bit. So here, oh, there it goes, it's a boy. Okay, good deal. All right, so now this is, oh, because you have to slide it in. Oh, come on now. Look at this. There's a little thing you gotta slide in. Watch. Slide that down, watch. We missed the slider thing. See, there's a slider thing right there. Where is the slider thing? Right there. Now it's slid in, and now it's going to be hooked. Ooh, it's awkward. Oh my goodness. I gotta be able to push down and in at the same time. Man, this is awkward. And there's like nowhere to hold on to it. It's like all slick. There it goes, yay. Okay, so now this needs to be going that way. Okay, yep, there we go. I'm gonna take the canopy off, because then I've at least got something to hold on to. Yep, I just licked my fingers. I know it's gross I and weird. Show them that part. There it goes, it's in. Okay. Okay, so now we need to put the screws in. So there's one big weird one. Do we use that for I anything don't. useful? This one still says a 10, okay. well, but wait, this has a little sticker over it. I wonder if that's what it's for. Okay, well here, look, the 10. The 10 goes up in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, almost done. So if you guys are new to Brian Phillips RC, a lot of what we do here, you could figure out on your own with some practice and time but we like to help you expedite your RC career. If you're brand new to the hobby, we'll help get you there as quick as possible. And if you're just coming back, we'll help get you caught up as quick as possible. So we do our best to reply to comments and things like that, but we have found that it's near impossible for us to keep up. And so we apologize if you're one of the many that have left comments and questions and we can't get to them. One of the ways you can improve your odds of reaching us is our Patreon account is one of the good ways to do that. Does this go in there? Is that what they were saying, that I'm weird not one? I'm sure, it has Can a, you read it out loud what it is? It says PB 3.5 by 12. Okay, this is, this is 3B, Phillips. I don't know. I have no idea what they're talking about. Those Let's are just all try the these. same, which are all 10. Let's just try these and see what happens. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't bite anything, so that's definitely not it. Okay. okay. So they evidently switched it into this one. So that's a Phillips, Phillips bit. Phillips bit, 3.5, oh, I don't know. 3.5 millimeter, is that what they're talking about? This happens to be a four. Okay, well that's fine with me, as long as it works. So guys, if you're new to the channel, that's what we do. We help people put stuff together, we give you kind of a step-by-step -step guide, and then we work through issues as we find them. And we've done hundreds of these things. And so even though we make it look harder than it really is, generally speaking, <laughs> it might be easier because you've got a helping hand, somebody that can make the mistake for you, and then you can learn from our mistake. Um, or if you're just coming back and you just don't know anything about the radios and stuff, that's where we really kind of help people, I think, more is with the radio setup stuff. Okay, that's not wanting to go in very good. I hope this one goes better. Hmm. I'm gonna try to snap this in. Is it, it feels like there, there isn't really a wrong way on this. Goodness gracious though. Oh, there it is, yeah. That was hard. <clears throat> is it ambidextrous? Uh, no, I don't know that they are. 
but it it, it, it went just okay. fine. Yeah, yeah. I just it's just not want to go into the clip. See, it's a clip doohickey. Mm -hmm. If I do one at a time, it's a little easier. That's the way to do it, guys. One at a time gets the job done. Oh yeah, sweet. Okay, so now we'll still be able to get to the control surfaces, but we have to wait till we energize it so that the servo center, and by the way, if you were wondering what they are, FMS 17 gram analog plastic. That's a little bit disappointing that they're plastic. But like I said, we just don't go through servers. You don't, you don't see us burning through them left and right. However, we have blown out servos, just like all of you have. Um, they're saying to keep it upside down. Yes. Do they, do they give you a reason or should we just buck the yes, system? Yes, they gave you a really long, personalized explanation they did was it like do it this way yeah okay that's usually the way the chinese tell us okay good at least the germans tell us to do it right because their way was right and ours was wrong <laughs> right that's the way it usually is so all right so we're gonna put a joiner rod in here Boop. okay and we're probably gonna shortly regret that because we're gonna need that out of there to get the wing through. What the heck? I feel like I'm fighting it. Oh, I remember having problems on this step. Wait, do you have different size rods? Mm, no. Okay. I don't think so. Oh. It's just got an edge. I remember yeah. having that problem before. Sometimes it's so weird. Like work it through the first you time. You just gotta, you know, work it through, like you said. Okay, so this is gonna go into the wing and it's gonna be really obvious where it is and where it comes from, okay? So yeah, we're gonna have to go in from this spot and just make sure that it keeps going. And then we're gonna have to screw it from the bottom, okay? That's why they want, why they want you down. to leave it upside down. I knew there was a reason. See, they were just being but nice. I just, nah, no they weren't. They were just being controlling. So thoughtful. I'm gonna go like this and flip it around. Okay, okay. launch the little light fixture. Yep. So when we designed this house, we designed the house with these lights because we knew we were gonna be doing a bunch of reviews here. And they go up and down. It's kind of cool because there's a counterweight up there. But we like almost never adjust them. Nope. Because that takes like lots of work. It is nice to clean them though. It is. Because since they're so close to our kitchen area, I mean, they get greased up all the time. Okay, cool. So if you guys are ever curious about our house, I know a lot of you have asked questions over the years. Uh, we actually have a build series on the house, <laughs> which is kind of goofy, but we were just short on footage during then. Right? Because we were here every day. Because we were here every day, babysitting the building. Sending 27,000 text messages about. It worked out. We live here now. The house is in one piece. Mostly. But our kids live here too. Oh, because the kids. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay, so these are the shorter ones. And like I said, just it's, it's, it's like a giant jigsaw puzzle. It's not especially difficult. But uh, when you get this thing, you'll be surprised. Because you're going to think, yeah, that looks like a lot of different moving parts. It's actually not too bad. And uh, we've had a lot harder builds. Oh, yeah. Like way, way harder builds. You know what I just learned about these tools? What? Wow, that's so cool. I could undo that set screw and pull this out and put it in my drill. What? That would be really nice. Hmm. Hmm. We'll have to be thinking on that. Okay. Also, did you notice that we don't have to put on the control rods? I did. That makes me so happy and smiley. Yes, I agree. Okay, so we're gonna do these other two and then we have to start assembling the top wing. Now, I know there's some of you that are gonna be like, I'm gonna get that pits and I'm gonna fly it with just the bottom wing. <laughs> um, you know, that would be kind of cool actually. So hit me up, let me know where you're putting your video because I wanna watch it. And I, honestly, I think it would fly fine. It would just be like, you'd have to go really fast compared to what it does with, you know, the biplane offering. Okay, and your CG would be still based on the top wing being where the top wing is, I think, right? That would be it? weird. It would be weird. Because your CG would be like in the front of the wing, which is unusual. Do you mark your CG on the top wing? Yeah, I do. Hang it. I do, I don't know what other people do. Because that's where I pick it up by. Right. With my fingers. Okay, so now we need to have it uh, right side up again, correct? I would Yep, we so. do. Okay, so. I'm gonna flip this thing over. I don't think we need that now for the moment. And you're gonna find out really quick that this plane is big all of a sudden. Cause look at that beauty. That is so sweet. And yes, it does get a little wonkadelic because there's nothing holding the uh, tail dragger. So it likes to wiggle. 
So be aware of that if it's like starts rolling and you've got a table that's not quite level, can roll off your table pretty easy. Okay, so we got the wing already sort of sub-assembled and now it's less sub-assembled because those things both just popped out. That's annoying. So they're both tapered and they are both the same, just so you guys know, if you didn't already figure that out on your own. Now this needs to go up on top and then the screws reach through and hit this. But is there some weird artifact that we need to use to join the top and the bottom right now? Or do we go ahead and screw them together right that now? That was my can't remember. question. It does have those on before okay. All right. the top wing. So they're showing nothing of a detail. Great, thanks FMS on that one. It does not make it clear which and one's left and which one's nothing right. Nothing marked. Okay. But I think because they are the same parts, Oops. they should be okay. But I want the seam to be on the inside. So it's gonna go like this, okay? So drop it in and then slide it back. Hold that up. No, actually okay. don't. And then I'm just gonna drop this one in and try to slide it back too. That's what I was afraid of. Huh. It does not feel like it wants to go. I'm just concerned I've got the wrong one in there. I almost feel like it'd be better to just put those screws in so we're not fighting 16 moving parts. Okay. What do you think, camera crew? Yeah, I mean, we wouldn't have to tighten them, but just to hold them. Just to hold them together? Them. Yeah, I think it's going to be easier if we just start those. So folks, there's one other thing that people have talked about in the forums and I thought was basically a bunch of malarkey until it happened to me once. And it was funny because I was warned by one of our subscribers and he was over here flying with me. And he said, hey, what are you gonna do about holding your battery in? And I was like, what do you mean holding my battery in? There's a battery tray, I've never had a problem with it. Well, while we were loading the battery, the battery tray, clips broke and the 6S 5,000 milliamp hour battery slipped back. And uh, I was like, oh, that's what you mean. I'll show you my even easier solution than I think Air Marshall might have done one. And it was a good solution where he just glued a block, epoxy to block to the bottom of the canopy. Nothing wrong with that. That's a great idea if you want to do that. My solution is even easier if you have a Chinese screwdriver sitting around. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Because I did it on the other one and it worked perfectly. And uh, that'll, that'll protect you as well. Now, while this thing is only attached by the plastic, you need to be careful you don't bump it, camera crew, because yeah. you do bump things, because you're like holding a camera. Okay, so now I'm just gonna duck down here and see if I can do this thing, okay? So I'm gonna try to line up all four at once. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just verify. Yeah, they're flat on the top and the bottom. They're machined into the plastic. So now I can hold the servo. That gives me a little something. Uh, no, I can't. It just walked away from me. Dang it. I remember this being awkward because there's like nothing to hold on to. I'm gonna hold the horn. Oh, for God's sake, how do you do that? I remember having problems with this before because it's just awkward. There's nothing to hold to. Time to do it. You ready? Yeah. Ready, go me. Oh my goodness, that's a scary thing. It doesn't want to slip in. Mm. And what's going on here is this edge doesn't want to start, okay? So if you fight it, you may have to take the X-Acto to the edge. We did not last time, and I don't want to do it this time either. But I'm going to still try it. But you guys can see what I'm talking about. There's like nothing to hang on to. Oh, there it goes. It's a boy. Ooh. Okay, so same thing here. Oh, man, that's a scary move. Because like you're really pressing hard on those things and you're just getting them all crinkled up and I hate that feeling. Okay. And I'm about 99% certain we have them in the right position. Now, it just becomes a matter of trying to brace your hands and body in such a way that allows you to do that. Okay, once they're on, they're a lot easier for the record um, to take on and off. And then there's no more struts that you have to mess with on this plane, which is nice. Compared to some of the other offerings, there's a lot of yeah. pieces. 
And you know what I was just realizing? Hmm. You know, back in the, the ecosystem of RC, there was an E-flight biplane. We never did that plane. We never, ever did it. I don't know why I'm just thinking of that. Hmm. I don't know if I remember that. But yeah, it hasn't been out for some time. I think they might have had some issues with the weight or something. But... <clears throat> Okay, I'm gonna spin this. Okay. It does help to get some bite on 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 this. There it goes. Got it. Okay, got it. That one was way easy. The last one was like super easy. This guy's scary. Okay. Whoo! You don't want to screw up your plane because this thing is gorgeous, as you can see. You don't want to get a bunch of weird marks on it. Okay. So just so you know, we're charging 5s 6,000 5s. 6S, 5,000 milliamp hours. Sorry, I could not get that out of my mouth. And we are gonna use those to fly this. We have a Gen 1 and a Gen 2, both 50C because they call out a 35C, I believe, still. Mm -hmm, they do. And I wish that they would stop calling out 35C packs because you can use the 30C packs all day long. And uh, you know, you can just wear it out quicker that way. Hey, before you get too far, did you tighten those four screws on the top or did you just do them in there loose? Um, I'll go back and double check if okay. they're fully torqued. They're they're torqued. Okay. Yeah, but I'll I'll go ahead and do it again. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Um, okay, great. So they're they're torqued down. They're good. Good. Um, all right. So now there is a manual that comes for the reflex if you decide to do this. We're gonna try this configuration. We'll see if we can get it to work. Now there is a couple extra steps involved, and we do not have um, these installed yet. So we'll do those after we get the receiver installed. Okay, so we'll just kind of leave those handy. We'll pause, get reset, and come right back. Okay, so while we're not ready to actually test the CG, we're in a market now before we finish the build. Okay, so this goes all the way to 150, 154.72, and that's kind of handy because we need to go to 155 millimeters, but that's from the leading edge of the wing, and so there is a flat point here, and then what we need to do is, it's hard to mark this plane. I just remember this was an awkward one to mark, and then we have to go 10 more millimeters for the back marking because it's a 10 millimeter range. Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna measure from here. I'm just gonna come down here and just uh, measure to one of the ribs, okay? Okay. So now once I've got that marked, then I'll just go 10 from the other side. I really wish they would've measured from the inside because yeah. uh, it would've made it easier for the, um, for the marking, okay? Now, if you're anything like me, you're gonna mark it. If you're anything like normal people, you're probably gonna mark it. But the thing is, if you don't wanna mark it and you just wanna get your battery set in the tray, that's fine too. I just think it leaves more room for problems. Uh, this is a big plane. It actually is gonna fly pretty good, regardless of where you put your CG. Um, I mean, there are limits to what I'm saying about that, of course. But I wanna get to this rib. Is that the same rib I did on the other side there? Yeah, I believe so, yes. Okay. So once we mark this, then I just follow it up with a black mark. Then I can go to 10 and just use that 10 as my mark between the front and the back holes. Okay, okay. great. So it should be pretty easy, but we kind of lucked out with respect to the fact that we did have the 150 millimeters of re 100, 155 millimeters of reach, even though it only says 150 on the scale. Yeah. Okay. So it was 155 to 165 with these calipers. Okay. So let's mark the back hole so that it's easy to see. And when we pick this up, we'll be able to feel and see. Okay. All right, very good, very, very good. Okay, cool. So the next step for us is radio setup. Now radio setup for us is usually a process of hooking up like an AR620, or in this case, you could even get away with an AR410, which is a really inexpensive option, and you still get the high quality spectrum experience. But what we're gonna do today is a little bit different because we've got these little ones we've been wanting to use, but it only really works if you have a reflex V2 on a plane that doesn't need retracts and flaps because those things are interfaced through a regular receiver, whereas we wanna use S-Bus or the serial bus, okay? So we're gonna try it. There's a bunch of different ways. So this is like an old serial receiver that says auto bind. It was for FPV racing and you would use that to go in. It was SRXL. 
These are SRXL2, so they have four wires instead of three. See, one, two, three, four wires. Instead of these, these are older, older technology and they only have three wires. And you're like, but wait, why would you, why would you do the, this style if this is a newer style? Well, because this has a four wire configuration, it's a little bit more complex, okay? This has bind buttons, which is nice, okay? Whereas, look how small that is. Yeah. Whereas these don't. And you're like, oh crap, well then how do you bind them? Yeah, good question. The way you would normally bind them is I would grab whatever receiver I have lying around. This happens to be a DSMX. Um, this is just some bang good thing that we got. Uh, you could use a lemon, you could use an old Spectrum, you know, 8020 or whatever they were that, I forget the model number, 8010. But they have a serial satellite port. And once you plug it in, you just bind with your bind plug. And then you're golden. Once you're bound, you just separate this and you're ready to rock and roll. But I wanted to see if we could use the new style and see if it works, okay? But if you're using the old style and you don't want to do guesswork and you don't want to build ends, we found that this does plug into that, which is pretty sweet. So maybe for the sake of today's work, we're gonna go with one of these so we can see if this wire works because this has three pins. And if we pop out one of these two, the only difference here is that one has a short antenna and one has a long antenna, okay? So you can see the model numbers are really close, 90, 9746, 9745. So this is a carbon fuselage remote receiver. So you can hang the antenna out of your sailplane or whatever, because that's usually like a sailplane application. Okay, so we're gonna pop this out real quick. We're not even gonna probably use this thing today. We're gonna use this. And um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug this thing in. And this came, ironically enough, with our programming cable, okay? So that's where we got it. And this is the little screwdriver. We got millions of these things from like, crappy planes that we did, these little toy grade ones, mm -hmm. and we're gonna use that to hold the battery in, and we'll show you that later. But for now, this is going to allow us to adapt into our apparatus over there. So I'm gonna just grab these old receivers, and I'm gonna show you how this works. Now, all right, so we tried to use this thing, and it didn't work. We couldn't get it to work. We tried a bunch of different things. It was really frustrating to film, and probably even worse to watch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you our setup using this, it just happens to be a receiver we have lying around. Yes, it's DSM-2 instead of DSM-X. And yes, it's got like a million channels. It's 10 channel, which is more than we need. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this thing up and we're gonna start from scratch. And guys, my apologies, I can't figure out how to get this working. If you know how to do it, let me know in the comments below or hit me up on an email in the About tab. Thanks guys, stay tuned, we're gonna get that done next. Okay, so we've already set up our radio setup, but we're just gonna redo it in a minute here so that you guys can follow along. But we'll go ahead and get this plugged in because we've got it all set here anyway. So what we've got is our wires that we would normally use to plug in. So the S-Bus PPM is gonna go into our gear channel. That just happens to be the fifth channel on this one, or excuse me, one, two, three. Yeah, it's, the, it's that one, the fifth channel. Throttle's gonna go to throttle. It's pretty straightforward stuff. Rudder's gonna go to rudder pretty straightforward stuff. And then ailerons is gonna go to ailerons. And then elevator is gonna go to elevator. Now, if you wanna try to do this on an AR410, we don't blame you. In fact, we'll probably link to that. And then if you decide to pull out the receiver or the reflex and go into a computerized receiver with AS3X and safe, then we'll recommend like a 631, okay? So that's what we would recommend. That being said, if you have an AR620 or an AR410, you can plug in all the regular channels right here, but then you're gonna be left without a mode. You can force the mode by going to the other channels like the rudder or elevator and just getting that flashy light to the status that is what you want. In our case, we want it in stabilized mode. If you wanna go from auto leveling to stabilized to off, then you'll have to make assignments to your switches and do that stuff but most people are not gonna be using both, I don't think. So, also at some point during our build, we broke this, we will keep that clip for you. We'll show you how we fixed it. We used a singular uh, paper clip to fix. Both ends got broken. Very brittle and very easy to break. So be careful on that. Okay, so we'll show you that. 
and we're gonna show you this. So this is all wired up, it's ready to rock and roll. So what we need to do is bind it, but in order to bind it, we have to build the profile, which is what we're gonna reset now, and just go ahead and start from scratch so that you guys can follow along if you need the help, okay? So I'm gonna click, I'm gonna scroll down to system setup, disconnect to RF, and then I'm gonna go to model select, except I'm not gonna go to model select and create a new model. I'm just gonna go to model type, and then I'm gonna select something different. Data will be reset, no. I'm just gonna go to Acro and yes. Okay, so that's gonna reset my data. How do we know? Because the name will be Acro. Okay, so we're gonna go through the whole process. So now we're gonna type in our model name and we'll come back when that's done typing. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've got the FMS Pitts Reflex without the E 1.4, okay? So now we're gonna go aircraft type. We're gonna set the wing type as normal and normal. And then we're gonna scroll down to select image so that it's easier to find the plane and select the biplane. And then we're not gonna do anything else here. We're pretty much done until we're ready to bind. Then servo setup, dual rates and expo. So we have to set that. We'll do like, like we always do. We always do five, 10 and 20. And then we lower <clears throat> our rates on, whoops on this to 90, okay? So then the elevator, same thing. We're gonna set it to 5, 10, and 20. And this is gonna be the same as what we always do because we do have a stabilizer on this plane and we'll be using it. Now, if you didn't have a stabilizer, you might run a little bit extra expo to help soften the sticks and help the plane fly a little easier but it's also a very big preference item, okay? All right, so now we'll start in that. We'll run in the middle setting. So it's always gonna be, all three axes are gonna be like this, okay? Then we're gonna go to throttle cut. We're gonna turn that on to switch H and we're gonna move the stick and we can see it's definitely working. And then and when we unclip, it's good, okay? Then we're gonna set up timer we're gonna set it to five minutes with a one out timer active. And we're gonna set uh, one minute is gonna be a voice. 20 seconds, nothing. 10 seconds will be voice. And then expiration will be tone and vibrate with the tone every minute thereafter. And that's really all we have to do. So throttle cuts on. Let's go ahead and bind this thing. I've got a couple pieces of foam here. The foam's gonna help us hold our receiver in place because it's just gonna trap it, okay? So we've already plugged this in to the reflex, so we can just put this into the bind plug. It's kind of in a weird spot on this lemon, so. And like I said, normally we would use a spectrum, but we just happen to be out of them right now, so we're gonna be using everything else. Okay, so now I'm gonna click, scroll down to bind, right here, I'm gonna click bind, and then scroll over to bind. Hold the plane, make sure you're securing it. Okay, bind complete. Now we can unplug the bind button or the bind plug. Wait for the reset. <clears throat> throttle cut is on and tested. Throttle cut is off and we're good. Okay, so I trust it now. Now I'm gonna de-energize the circuit for a moment and we'll come right back to it once we get this trapped in here. Okay, so now I have to take these wires that we don't want to be a problem and I'm gonna undo, um, I think we'll, we'll, probably, we'll probably undo this one and go underneath, that's the throttle wire. And we'll just do a little teeny bit of cable management and slide that in and push that throttle plug straight into the reflex. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these handful of cables that are extra and just tuck them in. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these other cables. Now this is not gonna be a spatially aware receiver, so we don't have to worry about getting it mounted level or flat or anything like that, but it might work out that way and that's perfectly fine. Okay, then we're gonna just kind of stuff that where it goes. And once it's stuffed where it goes, yeah, I don't really like that. I'm gonna see if I can rotate that around like this and then drop it in. Ooh, that's way better. See, now it's sort of trapped on its own. So now I can take this little chunk of foam and just stuff it in. And all that does is just traps it. Now also, we did this fancy little feature, which is a screwdriver from China. 
If you're watching my channel much, you probably have 20 or 30 of these in your drawer. If you don't, you can use anything you want. Now what that does is that helps to keep the battery so you're not depending on these two clips from having that fall out, okay? Some people have had that happen on this model. I personally didn't have it happen until it was so weird. I had a buddy here flying and he suggested that I look into this block and I can't remember if it was like RC, what did I say earlier? Oh. One of, one of the other yeah. influencers. Um, and I'm sorry I'm forgetting right now, but anyway, he suggested putting a block here. I'm not gonna put a block here, but you can put a block here if you want. He's got an idea for that, RC Marshall. Is it RC yes, Marshall? I'd say he's so saying. anyway, so shout out to him for that idea, but I didn't use that idea, I used this idea because it's like way easier for me. And that just traps it forward. Now, um, you may find that your battery needs to be a little bit forward of that, and that's fine. If that's the case, then you may need to reposition this, but you have so much foam here, it's very, very easy to put that in. The other thing is you might want to trap the tray instead of the foam itself. So that's just what we did, okay? So now we can go ahead and plug this back in. And as you can see, this plane goes really quick when you don't have problems with the receiver. Okay, so plug that in. Go ahead and put the canopy on there, cockpit and all. And you'll notice that we have already installed our linkages. So the only part of this video you're not gonna see, unfortunately, in the radio setup is this part. And all we had to do was take and slide this into the hole down from the top and then snap this on, okay? So you turn these in and out until this surface is level. And then the same is true right here. And I apologize that we did not capture that because this part was part of our tedious radio setup. Now the ailerons, we did not have to adjust. They were where they are, okay? So the only thing we had to do was put these linkages that go from top to bottom. In our case, they have to be lined up like this, the same direction. If you have any asymmetry, you'll break the pin off and that little pin goes through and then they are very brittle. And if you give any torsion, they just break right off. And so what I did was I took these little chunks of paper clip and just heated them up in the stove and stuck it through. We'll try to save that clip for you. It's very short, it's very brief, it'll be at the very end. So hopefully that answers your question as to how that happened. Then we need to make sure that our surfaces are going the right way. So camera crew, come back around. I always like to roll the plane into a spot where we can see. Elevator up, elevator down. Y'all left, y'all right. Roll left, ooh, that doesn't look right. See? So now we need to click, go to servo setup, travel, reverse ailerons, roll left, roll right. Elevator up, elevator down, y'all left, y'all right. And we're clear, everything looks good here. We'll be able to do some craziness. Now one other thing too I'm gonna suggest is, I remember, let's look at this for a sec. I remember back in the day, now that I think of this, I wanna go to elevator. And I wanna go to this setting and I wanna make it like double what I normally do and then drop the rates even more. And then I wanna leave that at 100, but I wanna bring this up to like 20. And then I wanna set this to half. Now, why am I doing that? Because I remember having that problem. So we're gonna have a little bit extra expo on the elevator. And the other thing too is, if you want more expo, a softer elevator, you can also go to this next hole on the elevator. You could go in one more and you'll still have a lot of elevator authority on this plane. It's got plenty, but since you can fly this almost 3D, you probably wanna keep it, okay? So run a little higher expo. All right, so now final test is gonna be throttle cut off. Oh yeah, throttle cuts back on. Now we're gonna look for stabilizer and or auto leveling, which is on the gear switch. The gear switch is toward my belly currently, which I don't want it there. That's an unusual spot. And we are not auto leveling, okay? So that means we should be stabilizing. Looking at the rudder, it's going up, it's going down. Elevator down, elevator up, aileron down, aileron up. I can see it, you're gonna have a hard time seeing in the video, so camera crew over here, straight up and down. In fact, I'll probably have to take it. So you see how it goes just a little bit and just a little bit and just a little bit. It's gonna be hard for you guys to see you may have to take my word for it on this one because mm -hmm. it's just not got a lot of movement. So it is on, and so I would like this position to be auto leveling, so I'm gonna go into gear, servo setup, 
and I'm going to reverse gear. Okay. So now this is in stabilized mode, switch back in the normal method and it's going to auto level. And how do you tell if it's auto level, flip it on its belly. It looks for the quickest route. And then also nose down, elevator should be up, trying to level. Mm -hmm. Nose up, elevator should be down, trying to level. There you go. So now everything is tested. One last final control surface test. Elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right, yaw left, yaw right. And don't be afraid to move your control if you're brand new and just getting used to it. So that thing is ready to fly and it's gonna be awesome. The Pitts is a great plane. I already knew it before we unboxed this because we did it not too terribly long ago. Now, that being said, if you wanna know how to set up AS3X in safe and you'd rather that than the reflex, we have a video that showcases that and we'll probably put it in the same playlist because it is the exact same plane. It just has a different receiver apparatus installed. And yes, the Lemon RX receivers are fine. They do sell a six channel. It'd be fine for this application, but we do like to work with the Spectrum gear because we are used to using Spectrum gear. Now, that being said, it makes no difference to us where you guys get stuff as long as you're getting stuff and you're flying it and you're enjoying the hobby. But do follow our links if you want to help support us financially. That's the best thing you can do. Even better than being a Patreon, but special thanks to our Patreons right now. If you want to be one, we have links down below. PayPal, one-time gifts, super thanks, one-time gifts. Those are all great ways to say thanks, but smash the like button. That's super easy. Click the bell for notifications when you're subscribing and choose all. You'll get notified of all the new content that's coming from Brian Folks RC. And the best and last way is to buy the things that you're gonna be using anyway. You don't pay any extra. We get commission from the manufacturers. It helps us to complete the full circle of the ecosystem of RC so we can help them, help you, help us, help you, help them. So everybody wins. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, FMS, good job. This pits is sweet. Maybe some soft tires in a 1400 millimeter, uh, 1400 mil millimeter bird. I'd like to see some LEDs, to be honest. But at the same time, I don't know that a lot of guys are running LEDs on these things. They're not doing night flying that I can tell, but I would still like to see it. Soft tires, LEDs would be good. Other than that, this thing is gorgeous and really good. So thanks for watching guys. There's so much more coming from Brian Phillips RC and we'll have the clip showing how to fix this in about 10 seconds. So we hope you check that out if you need the help. You'll notice we did not screw this side up. So good job me, see you soon. All right, so we're gonna put these control rods on to control the ailerons. Are you in like stabilization or auto leveling? Um, even if I was, it wouldn't matter, but okay. good, good question. Okay, so there's this, nothing, this, nothing, okay? So honestly, it's on the gear switch, but it shouldn't matter because as long as the plane is level, then we should be good to go. Okay. So I guess it's gonna be really hard to tell but we do have to get the elevator set up and the rudder set up. So the way you can tell is if you go back here and you look, I can hear it moving. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the easiest way is we've already vetted our throttle, we trust it. So we'll put it upside down on the counter because it's big and obnoxious. Here, that's auto leveling, that's not. Okay. okay. So we know we're out of auto leveling because that's critical, otherwise it'll screw up your elevator and uh, rudder, okay? Because it might not be in the correct home position when you put this in. So I just like to turn those a few times and all we have to do is, oh wait, where are we putting these? Oh, I had it open and then we messed yeah, with the- Yeah, then we messed with the- With the that thing. Oh, uh, are you on rudder or elevator? Elevator. Elevator is- Outside hole, outside. Uh, and then on the arm, it's the second hole from the outside. I don't know what you're saying. So the second hole on the control arm, okay? Then we slide it in, give it a turn. And now we just need to level this. So that means we need to go quite a bit back in. Like this. And then I gotta get my body in front of it. And that looks pretty dang good actually. So we're just gonna snap that on there. Now keep in mind, you can use trim, but you don't wanna depend on trim for this sort of stuff. So I'm gonna come back here and snap that on. Oh boy, that does not wanna go on there, does it? 
It's annoyed with me for trying to push that through too. Is there something I'm doing wrong? It seems pretty standard to me. Is this the kind that only goes one way? Nope. Elevator up, elevator down, good, okay. So now we have to do the same thing on the rudder. And then what, are, what am I doing for holes on this one? Rudder is same outside and then the second on the arm. What do you second mean outside? The outside? You mean on oh, the Oh, there's arm. no ball, it's a ball yeah, now. Yeah, so Sorry. it's the second one from the end. Yeah. Okay. All right, so now the rudder, I'm just gonna line it up like this. So I gotta go way out on this one and just make sure it's not gonna jank out. Geez, we're toward the end of the throw. Uh, one half more. Yeah, that's pretty close. I think we're good there. Okay, so I'm sorry. I know that's kind of hard to see, folks. So we're just gonna snap that on. Now we're gonna check the direction. Yep, yawing the correct direction, elevator correct. And we are rolling the incorrect direction. So go to servo setup, travel, reverse, ailerons. Roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down, yaw left, yaw right. Okay, so we're good on everything except for the top surfaces. We need to connect these joiners. So these joiners are gonna have to go through here and we wanna get this done so we can fly tonight. So we're gonna do this quickly, snap these on. Then we're gonna come up here and we can see we need to run those down quite a little bit. Oh, okay, well that didn't work so good. Okay, so now my next move is gonna be, I have to hold this really hard so I can spin this, okay? If you ever break one like that, we'll show you what to do here in a minute. That's not a good thing to happen when the sun's setting. Okay, so we'll snap this one through. Okay, and then we're gonna go up here and see where we need to be. So we want that to be level and true. It's actually pretty dang close right there. Oh, and I broke the other half now. Oh, that's pretty frustrating. Guys, sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. And I feel like this one's just kind of losing for some reason, but we'll still show you how to, how to get it done, okay? So we're just gonna put that through all the way up. And then we're going to have to come back with that and pin it later. And you can see we're not quite even, but as you can see, we are moving both surfaces. So now we need to actually come out with this a little bit more. Gosh, these things suck. One, two, three, four. Oh my gosh. Terrible. Super frustrating. Oh, there's nothing worse than being ready to fly or wanting to fly badly and then having something break right before. And that's part of the reason why Brian Phillips RC exists because we want to try to help people not get into those predicaments and look what we did. We just got right into them today. One, two, three half turns. Okay, so once that's done, we'll slide that through. And we're pretty dang close to level, so that's probably good. Now nah, we're gonna go half a turn more. Okay, so just grabbing this one half more turn. There we are. Okay, and then this one can go straight in to the hole. And you can see we have a nice smooth transition on both top and bottom. Okay, so those are gonna pop out until such time as we fix this, which we can relatively quick order. So now we're gonna do the other side right now, and this is gonna be probably easier accomplished with that out of the way. And we are going to walk out of the menu. This plane rides low to the ground. So as you move it around, be careful you don't accidentally hit your transmitter, okay? All right, so this one here is gonna be the exact same function as the other side. And we can pretty much get it where we think we need it. And you want them lined up square to each other. Okay, so we're gonna go in like this. Okay, and then in like this, cause that's about where we needed it. And then we're gonna go back out and just get quite a few turns out. And that's hopefully gonna get us close to where we need to be. And these need to be 90, to, they need to be square with each other, okay? So you gotta get one of them in, so we'll put the bottom one on. Snap it in, being sure that we're gonna make sure that we brace this. And then this needs to go up just, okay, it needs to come down just a hair. 
So I'm gonna grab this and actually hold it. And these things are brittle as all get out. Three, four, there's four turns. And you'll break off the little doohickey on there and then you'll be screwed like I am on my other side. But we'll show you how to fix it. It's just annoying to have to fix it. Okay, so there's that and there's that. So now when we roll the plane, we'll have the top and the bottom aileron working. Okay, so now how do you fix this when those things break? Okay, when this eventuality happens, we're gonna show you how to do it and I'll come right back with the tools. So we're gonna heat up, we're gonna heat up a paper clip like this, watch. We're gonna turn on that and we're gonna heat this carefully so we don't get burned. We're gonna make it so it's like red hot on the tip. Okay, so that's getting pretty much red hot. Okay, we shut that off. And then I'm gonna pass this through. And we're just gonna get it started and it's probably not gonna go. You can also drill that out. Okay, so we got it started, so we got a good starting point. We're just gonna get this side nice and toasty, red hot, like melt plastic type of hot. As you can see, it's very hot. Kids, don't try this at home without your parents' help and have, have them facilitate this maneuver. Okay, then go all the way in and let it cool down. Okay, don't melt it, okay? So if it's real hot, dunk it in your drinking water that you were supposed to drink during your video, okay? And then should be done, okay? So now we just have to bend that around. Now it's a pain, but it can be done. So we're gonna do the other side and come right back. Okay, so once you have that little melted, if you happen to melt the hole too wide, just cut down a little bit and you can go down a little bit further. Okay, then all you have to do is take the same stuff after it's cooled down and just pass it through. It's pretty basic stuff, guys. But if nobody's ever showed you that, now you know. That's what we do on Brian Phillips RCs. We help people figure out how to get out of hot water when they've made mistakes. And uh, preferably we'd like to help you avoid them, but that, you know, we're a bunch of dudes that like doing this hobby, so we're gonna be hard-headed and do it the wrong way, most of us, um, if I'm being honest. Okay, so there you go. So then we just uh, bend them and fold them and cut them, and then we're done. So we gotta do that top and bottom, and we'll be right back, guys. So as you can see, they're fixed. It's amazing, wonderful, great, grand. Frustrating to have that at the last second, but it is fixable and you can do it too. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video We answered some questions and not raised too many If you want to help support us buy the stuff from the links We'll have them down below as well as the battery used transmitter used all that good stuff and the receiver that we should have used Come back for more